This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Grace to you and peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the online worship of Wayside Presbyterian Church of Erie, Pennsylvania. Wherever you are this day, in home or elsewhere, may you know the loving and hospitable presence of God and the peace of Christ that surpasses all our understanding. Now, if the weather permits, some of Wayside's congregation will be worshiping on the grounds at Wayside on Sunday morning. And in both online and in-person services, we are welcoming worship leaders from the Presbyterian women as we celebrate with them the birthday offering. Also, we welcome members of the Waygrass, Waygrass, the Waysiders Bluegrass Band in this service as well. Holy Communion is being shared in this service. If you need some time to gather elements for that, either now or at that time in the service, feel free to pause the video to do that. If you don't have elements handy, or if it's not, uh, if you don't wish to participate in communion online, uh, please know that uh, the Spirit of Christ joins with you uh, within that portion of the service, whether you want to use elements or not. Now, Vacation Bible School is wrapping up, and it has been a wonderful time teaching us once again that just because we've never done it that way before, online and in people's homes over four weeks, that doesn't mean that we can't do it that way and that God is not hung up by forms and physical location. This gives us creative hope for Sunday school and other offerings as we keep on going. Many thanks to Nathan Royster who wrangled VBS and to the dozens of people who played a role in making VBS really special. Now we do not receive the offering in the online service, but we are grateful for the way offerings continue to come in by check, by electronic giving through the online giving portal. Prayers of thanks, prayers of planning and intention and dedication remember before God the generosity of God's people. Thanks be to God for you. And now, let us make our hearts ready to worship God.
The poet Wendell Berry once wrote about a flock of geese in flight. Abandon, as in love or sleep, holds them to their way, clear in the ancient faith. What we need is here. Wherever you find yourself this morning, let us worship and serve the Lord with joy and abandon, trusting that what we need is here. Our call to worship is based on portions of Psalm 103. I invite you to respond with the bold words on your screen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. The Lord satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. God revealed his ways to Moses and mighty acts to the people of Israel. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God will not always accuse, nor will God remain angry forever. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us for our iniquities. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who honor the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our sins from us. As far as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for us. God knows how we were made. God remembers that we are but dust. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. I invite you to pray with me using the words on your screen. Let us pray. Life-changing God, you have touched, embraced, and transformed us to be those who reach out to all who anger for what you alone can give. Keep our feet on your paths and bless us that we may be those who bless others. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen.
Our Savior invites us to observe the birds and the grass. The birds do not sow or harvest, but God feeds them. The grass do not spin or sew thread, but they are clothed in beautiful flowers. Are we not of more importance than the birds and the grass? And yet we doubt God's faithfulness, living in anxiety and hesitant to do God's work. Let us confess the ways we have sinned against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess the ways in which we look upon your good world of plenty and only see scarcity. We fail to recognize your grace in our lives and world, living with fear and not gratitude and believing there is not enough. We hoard for ourselves, are slow to share with others and hesitate to work for justice. Forgive our lack of faith in you. Open our eyes to the blessings of this life and world. And may we who are awakened to your blessings go forth to be a blessing to the world through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God does not repay us according to our sins. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our sins from us. As far as a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord's compassion embraces us. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Hi, everybody. I have a quick question for you. This jar of rocks, and the question is, is the jar full? It certainly looks like it. How could I possibly get anything more into this jar full of rocks. But actually I think I might, I think we're not quite there. Here I've got some sand. And it looks like that sand is going, filling in all those cracks and crevices. Yep, certainly seems like there's a lot more room in this jar. Shake it up a little. Yep, I guess we're pretty full now. No, we're not quite there. Got a glass of got a glass of water. Water's pretty hard to pour, but we're working our way into the sand. Yep, and we're able to get, fill this jar full of water. Now, what do we learn from this? One is that sometimes we think that we've filled up something, but there's really a lot more space that can be going in. And that can be an awful lot like our faith, that we have learned so much and we've been around it and think that we know so much about God, about Jesus, what it means to be a Christian. But just like this, there's always room for more. There's always room to continue to learn and go deeper, not just about who God is, but most importantly of what it means that God loves us, just how much God loves us. Jesus once told his disciples that in spite of the fact that of all they had learned from following him, that they were still going to learn more from the Holy Spirit. There was more truth they were going to be led into. And Paul told people in a letter that he wanted them to know the height and depth and breadth. In other words, just how big, beyond what we can imagine, God's love is. So as we continue to learn more about who God and Jesus is and who we are as followers of Jesus, and most importantly, that we are loved by God, no matter what, that there is always room to learn more about what that means for us and our life. So let us pray. Dear God, 
thank you for your love, which is so much bigger than we can imagine. And help us as we continue to learn what it means to be loved by you and what it means to love others as you have loved us through Jesus. Amen. As we turn to the reading of Scripture, let us be in prayer. Eternal God, you've satisfied us at the end of the day and you have held us through long nights of struggle. Now let the dawn break with your blessing. Awaken us and shine the light of your word upon us that we may see your face. Amen. Scripture today is uh, one of those scriptures from the book of Genesis. It's, a, it's part of that long narrative of the story of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and of Jacob's children, the 12 sons of Israel. But this is a story kind of in the transition between Jacob's leaving home, having stolen the birthright from his brother Esau, having lived for years with his uncle Laban and having there gained wives and children and, and livestock, now he's returning back to the place from which he came, facing the threat of his angry brother Esau, facing the unknown of days ahead. The reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 39. Listen for God's word. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please, tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I was at the grocery store and having waited behind the yellow line and, and then having been invited forward to load my grocery cart contents onto the conveyor belt, the mask-wearing cashier behind the plexiglass screen spoke up, How are you today? I said I was fine. I asked her the same. And she responded, I am blessed. Oh, well, that's wonderful, I said, or, or something like that, engaged in a little small talk. Later, I began to rethink my response. Next time, if she says, I am blessed, I hope I will take time to say, it sounds like there's a story behind that. Tell me about it. It would be a testimony 
to hear how this person has come in her life, a black woman in this time, an essential worker behind safety precautions during a pandemic, to state how it is that she sees herself as blessed. Because really, this woman stated what is common to all who interpret our lives in the light of Scripture. Abraham and Sarah, the forebears of the faith, they're promised blessing by God and promised that from them would come a people who would be a blessing. Blessed is a way of saying gifted, gifted by God with, with life, with hope, with faith, with joy, with strength, with wisdom, with perspective, to know the promise of God in one's life. Blessing is not a promise of the absence of hardship. Blessing sustains in the midst of hardship and challenge and struggle. The story of Jacob brings these struggles to light. <coughs> Excuse me. Jacob is no perfect saint of a person. We might wonder when we get to really know the story of Jacob how it is that this fellow is a hero of the faith. My friend Heidi Weatherford used to ask, is your life a message or a mess? Well, on this night, as darkness falls, Jacob is a mess. He's been a cheater and a manipulator. He's made bargains with swindlers. He's been taken advantage of. He's, and even though he has this large family and all this wealth, right now he is a nomad on the move with no place to go. And now, as the sun is falling, he faces a huge unresolved conflict with his angry brother. In the dark and mysterious night, God takes hold of Jacob, a stranger in the night. And, God, and Jacob takes hold of God, and they will not let each other go. And out of this faithful struggle comes pain and blessing. As the dawn rises, Jacob has a new name, a new sense of who he is and what lies before him. He is blessed. Jacob goes into the future with a limp and with trust in God's presence and favor. If his life was only a mess when the sun went down, as the sun rises, his life now carries the message of God's blessing. Blessing comes from God. It is God's intention. And blessing may perhaps be more real through struggle and challenge. In the life of the late Representative John Lewis, we see a man who, for conscience' sake, was beaten and arrested, and yet a man who was sure of God's presence, who had a strong sense of blessing. Congressman Lewis' words of his, these words that he often uttered, never give up, never give in, keep your eye on the prize. I think those words echo the spirit of Jacob. The spirit contained in the name Jacob was given, Israel, the one who strives with God and people and prevails, well, this is more than the new name for Jacob, more than the new name for God's people. It is the name we all are given as heirs of the promise, heirs of the blessing. It is our permission, it is our blessing to cling to God in the midst of the world's worst and our worst and what feels sometimes like God's worst and to prevail, to not be defeated. You know, in the pandemic, we've had to wrestle with the idea of church without the building, without the material pieces, and we've had to determine that the blessing is the reality that we hold in common, the reality of the presence of God and the eternal words of Scripture 
the reality of each other and our mission in the world. God will permit us to wrestle with matters of race and justice and pay attention to the use of power differently since we are in relative isolation, since we are being church apart from the building. Maybe, maybe we will be moved from mess to message, holding on to what we wrestle with until, by God's grace, it blesses us. Kathleen Norris wrote, If grace is so wonderful, why do we have such difficulty recognizing it and accepting it? Maybe it's because grace is not gentle or made to order. It often comes disguised as loss or failure or unwelcome change. Like blessing. That comes, as we often say, a blessing in disguise. Within the wrestling with loss and failure and and unwelcome change. Our sense of blessing often is built upon the rubble of something that went before. That's true of Jacob, where in the story that we had today, that river Jabbok is, is like a border between his past and his future. His sense of God's power and God's presence and God's favor. In a book in the church library, Faithful Families, Creating Sacred Moments at Home by Tracy Smith, we find there Tracy Smith has written creative ceremonies to use at home to acknowledge transition and to lift up the blessing that may be concealed within it. There are a number in there. Everything from, you know, when someone's getting ready to leave home to go to college or uh, when someone is... Uh, uh, moving into a nursing home. The one that touches me is a family ceremony to mark a divorce. Because in this ceremony, lovingly and creatively, the family acknowledges that as the family changes, God's love for the family never changes. It's an echo of Jacob holding on to God trusting that God holds on to him, that God holds on to you. And in that blessing, be strengthened for the hidden blessings concealed in the moment and in the days to come. At the communion table, Jesus gave us something very tangible, something to, to hold on to, to see, to touch, to break, to pour, to smell to taste as a way to unite with him in his wrestling with God and with himself and with the broken world, in the broken bread and the wine poured out to nourish us, to never give up, to never give in, to keep our eye on the prize. The silver cord of blessing that runs through the world and through our lives and the life of the church. God's message of hope that no mess can overcome. So that in the midst of our days, when we wonder about ourselves and all things, we may answer with confidence and joy. I am blessed. Amen.
Our story is one of God bringing life, blessing, and love into unlikely places. And as we take our place in that story, let us lift up our joys, needs, and concerns to the God of all life and all creation. Let us pray. Loving God, with a word you called light out of darkness and creation out of nothing, may we who depend upon your goodness place our faith and trust in you. Reassure us that in all things you are with us, and by your grace open our eyes, hearts, and minds to the promise that all we need is here. God of abundance, you have blessed the earth with bountiful resources and great beauty. We take for granted these resources, abuse your creation, and sustain patterns and systems that exclude others from your gifts. Have mercy on us for our lack of vision and faith, and instead grant us hearts of wonder and gratitude. Free us from the anxiety of scarcity, that we may freely share and freely be a blessing to those who are vulnerable in our midst. God of our mothers and fathers, you created us from the dust of the earth and breathed your spirit into us. You placed us in this world to bear your image and reflect your love throughout all of creation. We praise you for your generosity. We pray for wisdom and guidance to live into your purposes for us. Deliver us from all that corrupts our ability to see your image, your likeness, in the faces of our neighbors. Help us to see all which alienates us from our neighbors and redeem us to embrace your calling as your children and as one people. God of blessing, we call upon you in the midst of our needs. We pray this day for all those desperate for your healing. Moved by compassion, heal the sick and suffering whom we hold in our hearts this day. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you promise us the coming of your kingdom, where your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Awaken within us a hunger and thirst for your righteousness and justice in all things. Guide us in the ways of peace. Move your spirit over our community, nation, and world, that all may live with the full dignity of your children. Lord of the Resurrection, our Savior Jesus Christ, tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave opened the way to eternal life. We commend the dying and the dead into the promise of your love. Comfort all who mourn in the promise of the Resurrection. And, that, and in the promise that nothing in life or death shall separate us from your love. God of the church, guide us through trying and uncertain times. May we trust that the same Spirit which raised Jesus Christ from the dead to be at work among us. Lead us into new expressions and translations of your gospel. Renew us to reclaim your purposes and your mission in this time and place, that the world may rejoice in your name. We pray all of these things in the name of the one who has revealed your truth and your grace completely among us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Jesus said, Come to me, all who are working hard and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am humble and of gentle spirit, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and find rest for your souls. Friends, this is the feast table of our Lord Jesus Christ, and he invites all who trust in him to come and share in the bread and the wine because he has given it for you. Today, because of the pandemic, we're separated from one another. The elements that are on the table represent the meal Jesus serves to us all. Wherever you are, and with whatever elements you have, or even if you have no elements, Jesus is the host who welcomes and serves, so that you may be nourished by him in your hearts by faith. After the words of institution, there will be a moment for sharing in Holy Communion. Now, let us be together in prayer. Eternal wisdom, source of our being, the goal of our longing, we praise you and give you thanks because you've created us in your image to cherish your world and seek your face. Divided and disfigured by sin, while we were yet helpless, you emptied yourself of power and took upon you our unprotected flesh. You labored with us upon the cross and have brought us forth into the hope of resurrection. Therefore, with the woman who gave you birth, the women who befriended you and fed you, who argued with you and touched you, the woman who anointed you for death, the women who met you risen from the dead, with all your lovers throughout the ages, we praise you. Blessed is our brother Jesus, who before his suffering earnestly desired to eat with his companions the Passover of liberation, who on the night that he was betrayed, shared this meal with his followers. Therefore, as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are proclaiming Christ's death until he comes. In the body broken and the blood poured out, we restore to memory and hope the broken and unremembered victims of tyranny and sin, and we long for the bread of tomorrow, and the wine of the age to come. Come then, life-giving Spirit of our God, brood over these bodily things, and make us one body with Christ, that we may labor with creation to be delivered from its bondage to decay into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Gathered as we are in dispersed places, we yet join our hearts in the unity of the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus, when he had given thanks, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this remembering me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out in my blood for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this, remembering me. For as often as you eat of this bread 
and drink of this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Friends, share in this meal in being nourished in your hearts by faith. Now would you join with me in the prayer that will appear on your screen. Holy God, we thank you for this feast of grace and life. As we have been served, help us to serve our neighbors. As we have been fed, help us to feed all who are hungry. As we have been loved, help us to love the world. Because in Christ Jesus, you have loved us. Amen. Friends, go out into the world, wherever you are, however you can, and remember that you are blessed, and you are, for the world and for other people, a blessing. So go in the knowledge of the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence and the power of of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.